incredibly affected as on once you start to put it into a full swing now. That's probably, that's probably a 170 yard carry, you know. Oh, wow. That's a 180 yard carry. 119 ball speed once you throw this into a full swing. That's not bad. 180 yards and uh, no backswing. Right, welcome back to another episode of Testing the Tips. And for a brief reminder, that is me as an average golfer testing some of the tips that I see from the leading golf YouTube tuition videos. And this one comes from a gentleman by the name of Eric Cogorno, which, uh, to be honest with you, fantastic channel, does uh, some great tips, but this is one that I featured previously on the channel a couple of years back, and I want to revisit it because it's something I've noticed in my own game has been slightly affected. And that is clubhead speed and how to generate more clubhead speed with zero backswing, at least in the practice session, which will lead to you hitting the ball further. It's as simple as that. We're here indoors at Chester and North Wales Golf Academy. I've got plugged into Trackman and uh, we need one simple prop. We don't need Trackman by the way, but you do need something that is placed just behind the ball for the first drill. Because effectively, this comes in what is three different stages. Eric talks about how we as golfers spend or, or create a huge amount of effort in generating power from the top of our backswing into that impact position. Let's be honest, we all get a little bit excited. We can even sort of rush that bit where we don't even get to the top of our backswing because all we want to do is get back down and hit a golf ball. And there's a lot of power between the top of that backswing and that impact location, which isn't then transferred through through the impact position and through to the top of your swing. And that's what Eric is concerned about. And that's how he looks at generating more clubhead speed with the simple but very effective drill. So the prop, anything you want. Basket of balls at the driving range. I've got a few tee pegs that we've got here on the indoor studio. You can put a, a head cover down behind. And we actually don't need the golf ball at this stage. What you're looking to do is get into your normal address position. And what we're attempting to do is to get to the top of our swing from this position. So no backswing. All we're going to look to do is push through the impact position and get to the top of our swing as fast as we can. Now, you've got to bear with me on this one because it's a weird old drill, but trust me, it's effective. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is naturally, when you get in the address position, we're trained, or our brain is trained at least, to want to go that way. That's where we want to go. So straight away, there's an eagerness for me to push back into the, uh, the basket of tees that I've got at the moment. So that's why the, we, we need this sort of prop. What you're then going to do, get to this position and push through. I remember when I did this the first time round, it is the weirdest sensation and the, the oddest training um, drill that I've ever taken part in. I also remember getting out of breath quite quickly because... It might look that physical, but trust me, try it and you'll soon realize this is a lot harder than it looks. And the reason it's harder is because effectively you've got no momentum, which is carrying you through from the top of the swing through that impact position. I'm already out of breath. I know it sounds weird, but try it. And what you're doing is as you continue to do this, it appears, or at least it appears to me, to be relatively slow in the motion that I'm creating and the, the speed that I'm creating through to the top of that swing. You start to realize just perhaps how slow you are in that transition and through the impact position. And all you do, keep on trying that and keep on trying to increase the speed and tempo in which you get from the address position up into the top of your swing. And as you keep on doing it, the more reps you do, you'll start to feel that you get to that position. The muscles start to loosen up a little bit and you're able to build speed. Now that in itself would be a good enough little drill to see you when you start putting a ball in place, you'll start to see the impact that it has on your club head uh, speed. And at the start of a round before you go out, rather than practicing the full swing, I would suggest that what you do is take this drill before you get to the first tee, and it's a great way of warming up. But obviously we want to see where we take that from and how we move that now into the golf swing. And for that, we're gonna remove our little bowl of tees. 
Right, so phase two, and stick with me, don't go anywhere, you'll soon see some results, because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this into what is effectively our half swing. So we get into our position, we get ourselves into that set position there, wrists hinge as per our video we were doing last week, and from here, you're gonna go through that same uh, transition through to, the, uh, through to the full swing, the top of your swing, but you're gonna do it as fast as you can through that impact position. And this is where it starts to get interesting because a couple of things happen. So we're here. I'm then gonna whip through the ball and I already feel like I'm generating far more speed through that impact location than I would ordinarily. And that's my concentration being from a half swing, but once I'm getting through this impact location, I'm really starting to transition into the ball with a little bit more aggression a little bit more effort than I would normally. And what that does is a couple of things. You'll start to feel that there's a transition element, and we'll talk about in the full swing in a minute, where once we're starting to reach the top of our swing, you'll start to rotate and feel the hips move towards the left-hand side because you've got a much more aggressive attitude towards hitting through that impact location. So back to there. And all of a sudden, you start to clear that left side a bit, you start to get to the top of your swing a lot quicker, in my case at least anyway. And already, <coughs> without having a ball in place, I know that that is a much quicker club head speed than I would normally generate. But now, what we need to see is how that impacts on our strike. So, for the first time, we'll introduce a golf ball, and we'll see where we can take that from the half swing and through. That's a really solid strike. I mean, I remember doing this the first time round and what happened was I all of a sudden created a much better strike. I started to feel like, and perhaps we should have had a look on, um, on Trackman, that my low point was moving. So instead of striking the irons behind the ball, out on the golf course when we initially did this, I was starting to take a divot, so everything was moving forward of the ball. So the transition and that impact location was getting far more different than we'd normally be. It's such an effective thing, you know. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy how it, just by doing that very basic drill, you can feel so much difference through that impact location. It's incredible, it's baffling. Because in theory, to me, it's something that, uh, it's not that it shouldn't work, but you have to certainly commit to something that seems a little bit odd. Let's try one more. Up to there, and then through. So, up. A little bit off the bottom, that one. Did we catch the trees? No, we managed to sneak past. So again, that one, not quite perfect, but still got, yeah, it did okay, but you can see the club head speed has dropped. So to there, and then through. Okay, so half swing, that's better. And you'll almost see, or you'll feel rather, the difference in the sort of snap in terms of, uh, well, I hope you do anyway. The snap when you hit the ball, so we've got club head speed back up, 103, 145 carry. I'm using a seven iron and we're only using probably more than a half swing. I think that what generally happens is, I would imagine I'm getting up to three quarter. You think you're trying to control your swing into sort of here. What my reckoning is, it's probably a little bit longer than that. So half swing and then whip it through. It's incredible. And already this morning, what I start to see Let's just see what we got there with the club head speed. Don't forget, we're 103 on the last shot. 104, we're already starting to build 148 carry, half of a seven iron. It's just, you know, it, it defies logic to be quite honest with you. But trust me, it's a very important drill. Try it in the driving range, try it on the golf course. Bear with it, you might look a bit silly if you've got an audience at the driving range, but that difference between hitting through that uh, from the from the address position getting up to here as quick as you can when it translates into a half or full swing you'll probably see that it dips off 
a little bit, you won't get through there uh, as quick as perhaps you might think. Keep on working at it. It will, without doubt, increase yardage to your irons, without doubt. And to be honest with you, I can't see how this wouldn't work with other clubs either. But for now, that's my interpretation of Eric's drill. I will leave a, uh, a link below in the description for you to go and have a look. Check out Eric, which will give you a better explanation, certainly of the transition that he talks about from the top of the backswing, when you start to sort of load the swing a bit and turn the hips, move towards the ball. It has uh, certainly benefits, not just in terms of club head speed, but throughout the, the whole swing, I think it can have a very much a positive impact. So go and have a look at Eric's uh, explanation, which will be more detailed than mine, but it's another tip that I found very useful in my own personal game, and uh, I think it could be of help. Give it a go, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you've enjoyed that, hit the like button, and as ever, thank you for watching, I'll see you soon.